Attention please. AOA flight 19X London to New York will be slightly delayed. Passengers are advised to check in baggage and await further announcements. Attention s'il vous plaît. Vol AOA numéro 19X à destination de New York sera retardé de quelques minutes. Les passagers sont avisés d'enregistrer leur bagage et d'attendre notre prochain avis. Come on, dude, there's no mystery about it. It's a Selsen motor, not a human female. I'll pull it, check it and see what's wrong. It's an instrument, it won't lie to you. AOA flight 19X for New York is now open for boarding at gate 12. Please have boarding pass and all travel documents ready for passport control. All right, Mr. Holcomb. You're all set to go, sir. You'll be departing from Lounge 4. Thank you. Flight 19X. What's this X rating, partner? Spot of luck for you, sir, actually. It's an extra flight. You'll have the bird practically to yourself this trip. Yep, I surely would like that. Let me help you with that, ma'am. No, thank you. I can manage. Hello, I'm Sheila O'Neill. Has my husband checked in yet? That he has, Mrs. O'Neill. He just went to the cargo office. Oh, fine. Half a sec while I get my passport out. We'll take care of that for you, sir. Not to worry. Oh, thank you. There's a lot of fuel for such a light passenger list. Are we expecting a hurricane? You're pretty heavy on cargo. What's your manifest? Architectural features, 11,000 pounds. What the devil could that be? In this case, part of an abbey. What? I kid you not. The guy shipping it told me. Name's O'Neill. In fact, he's aboard your flight. It's a chapel room from some old English abbey. Even an altar. He's going to set it up in a place he's building on Long Island. extra flight, the cargo flight. It's all taken care of, Mrs. Pinder. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Pinder, would you please leave the dog here? Damon, he's coming with me. In the hole, madam. Now, don't worry. It's very comfy down there, and he'll enjoy it. But you have very few passengers on this flight. Please, can't he come with me? Regulations, madam. You understand, don't you, Damon? I have to. But I'll hold you personally responsible for his safety. Well, Mr. O'Neill, your wife went on ahead. She should be on board there. Uh, now, that lady who was just here, uh, is she on our flight? Mrs. Pinder? Yeah. Yes. Do you know her? Uh, yes. Unfortunately. Oh. Mm. And nine stewardesses? No, just the two of us. Come on up front, hon. Jenkins says they all go first cabin, okay? X-ray. Say, what is with the weather? No change, one nine. Our surface wind northeast, six knots. Are you kidding? We've just been hit in the face by some of the North Pole. Say again, one nine. -er. Thank you, one nine. -er. I think we just had a lesson on the theme as not to be believed English summer weather.
all right. Good heavens. That's flight 19X. That's boarding right now as well. Yes, it would be, wouldn't it? Seatbelts, no smoking, flight attendants. Check, check, check. You just made it. Yes, of course. Oh, any seat, just any seat back there. Thank you very much. Until your advice is not necessary. Now, in accordance with federal safety regulations, the cabin stewardess will demonstrate the use of the life jackets, which are located under the seats. B1. Rotate. B2 plus 10. Departure 124.1. Roger, 100 x -ray. Clearance correct. Have a nice trip. You know, I think maybe I'm going to put some black stone on the floor here around the altar. Very nice if you're planning to use it for a bar. <laughs> That's a little nasty, isn't it, dear? Yes, I suppose it is. I guess I'm just bloody tired of the whole business. It's your ancestral chapel we're riding on, darling. Over a hundred dollars a mile. You can afford it, Alan. It's fortunate I can afford to save something ancient and beautiful when your family estates are becoming condominiums and parking lots. Well, maybe that isn't all bad. You really want to quarrel, don't you? I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm just a little edgy tonight. Here you go. Oh, thank you kindly. Haven't I heard of you somewhere, Mr. Holcomb? Gee, honey, my business manager would be disappointed if you hadn't. I've been starring in the Western in Italy. My last one, Rimrock, made 15 mil. No, I think I must have confused you with someone else. I thought it only fair to warn you that I'm on board. Miss Spinner, I thought we had all this out in English court. And I came prepared to try it again in an American court. Mrs. O'Neill, I cannot believe that you would acquiesce in the uprooting of these priceless relics. Please, leave me out of it. Sacrilege. Sacrilege. I hardly regard it as that. You really don't know what's down in that hole, do you? I'm sorry, Mrs. Pinder, but this forward section is reserved for first-class passengers. You'll regret it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm sorry, Miss Harley. Yeah, sorry. I hope that part of it was over. That's a cause for every crank these days. But if I'm to be attacked by a lady crusader, I need a drink. Come on. Thanks, I'll stay here. You know, you're really a barrel of laughs tonight. I imagine you'll find somebody in the bar who is. 
Marlon. I'm sorry. you just put me on your back and walk us across the water? There was a time. Now I'd sink. Sir, you know that's against the rules? I'll tell you something. I'm bored with rules. Everything okay, Mom? Her girl's just a teeny bit nervous. But I'm sure when she's asleep. It's okay, honey. I'll tell the captain. No more bumps tonight. What do you see, Frank? Clear all round. Negative on buildup. Beats me what that one could have been. See belts, Captain? I'll save them. They pay to walk around this flying hotel. Let's let them live a little. Two six. Hmm. It's three minutes late. Must be a headwind building they didn't tell us about. Likely just the phones. Let's try some others. Oh, no, please don't. My bother. pleasure. My name's Steve. Believe yours is Sheila, am I right? Yes, but... Well, uh... excuse me, Sheila. Let's get this out of the way here. Now, I'll put these in. Here we go. Right as rain. If that ain't Dave Brubeck, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> hey. That ain't Brubeck. Doggone if I don't owe you a drink. I'll think about it, Pard. Maybe later. You got a deal. <laughs> How does it read on your side? Miles from Cornwall, Sun at 2-4. Correction. On mine now at 2-5. Same here, so I guess they must be working all right. Airspeed, I read, 630. Ditto. Gyro's check fine. So what do you make it? Impossible. In that last VOR, we're covering ground about like a lady bicycle rider. We must be bucking a headwind of 620 miles an hour. There's no such wind. That's right, there's no such wind. So what are we doing right smack in it? Roger, AOA 19 X ray. We see it. Thought we'd fouled up here in your position. We haven't changed position in 10 minutes. Problem seems to be a jet stream. Dead on, like at 600 plus. 600? Come again. We show winds aloft your vicinity westerly at 70 knots. Cornwall Center, I'm going to maintain my heading for two minutes more. Not out of it then. Request clearance for 180 back to London. Put that in the works, huh? Let 
let me ask you something. Do you think we should let our first class tourist upstairs? I don't know. I've got one who's packing a flask. Oh, no. Karate time. Yeah, it feels funny tonight. It feels very funny. Hey, lay off that, will you? You know how I hate flying. Coming up two minutes. Mark. Cornwall Center, one niner. X ray, how am I for that turn? You are cleared, one niner. Thank you, Cornwall. Starting one eight zero turn in one minute. Here you are, Mr. Farley. <sighs> Look, just fly it, huh? No, just the cargo hold. Must have cost you plenty. Are you charged by the pound for this kind of freight? I don't remember. My people set it up. If you have to ask, we can't afford it, right? Gwen Farley. Alan O'Neill. We never met, but uh, I know you. You gave me a bid on a hotel I built down in Orlando. You were too high on that. I didn't hire you. That's how I made $7 million in the last three years. And I'll tell you, I'd know how much this airplane was costing me to the cent. Well, I'm an architect, not a businessman. You're telling me. This stuff you're shipping, uh, I heard the woman downstairs giving it to you. What is it, part of a church? Yeah, the remains of an old abbey. It's been my wife's family for centuries. We met a little resistance when we took it. Gotta pay it uh, all the way. Can I pay? Excuse me. Hold your hats and watch the miles go by. We've got a 600 plus tailwind now. Let's see, we ought to knock off a ground mile in about uh, three seconds. We're not moving. We've got a 600 mile tailwind and we're not moving. Cornwall Center, AOA 19 X ray. Confirmed squawk setting at Alpha 2100. We have your blip, one niner. The devil are you doing up there flying in circles? Your position unchanged. Cornwall Center, stand by, one niner. What's up? We're caught in a wind like none there ever was. We've done a full turnaround and it's still smacking our teeth somehow. Cornwall Center, AOA, one niner x ray. We'd like a right turn to 090, and permission to descend to. Two six zero. That's funny. The lights aren't moving. What? Peculiar. Ugly illusion. Motionless. Suspended. I run, I get nowhere. Did you know this happens to be the summer solstice? Midsummer's Eve. Is that good or bad? It depends. If you're a witch, it's a night for bonfires and cantation. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> Beautiful moon tonight, huh? That's the fifth turn I counter. What's going on? Well, I don't think there's any problem. I fly my own plane, sweetheart. A custom jet. They keep changing altitude and power set, and I'll be a good girl and go find out what's happening. Tell me, are you a very good architect, Mr. O'Neill? I'm a very successful architect. Is that the same thing? Hmm. I used to think so. You tell me now. Are you a very good model? How did you know I was a model? That's an easy one. The way you dress. Choice of drinks, magazine, the whole package. Touche. What's going on in here? Anything we should know? Look, and don't panic. We've just got a, a little bit of a problem. Like what? Uh, it seems as if we're caught up in this crazy kind of a jet stream. It's as, as if we're hung up here on a hook. What is 
that mean? Talk later. You were right, Mr. Farley. There is a slight problem, but nothing we can't handle. I'll let you know as soon as I can. Try and figure it out. It can't happen, but it has. A wind or whatever it is is affecting this plane only. Just us. I don't get it. It's like being in a, in a whirlpool. We can't move in any direction. Six hours and 20 minutes of fuel left. We're burning it up. Let's reduce to 200. We're not going anyplace anyhow. Margo know what's happening and tell her to break out more drinks for the passengers. All they want. speaking only of myself. Oh, well, my, you're right. We really are running behind. Is it all right that I go? Yes, of course. I should like the lady's husband present when she returns to consciousness. If you'd be so kind as to look after her. Yes, of course. Yes. She's a beautiful woman, isn't she? Or are you just working on a get well prayer pool? I was just thinking I might become a doctor. Why? Why not? I can be anything I want now. And they have such a power over women. It's that uh, paternal thing. Except doctors are free to use it. Maya, what's the matter? You don't look well yourself. I'm just sick from watching you bleed. says you're all right. There's nothing serious. Uh, I, I'm sorry to be such a bloody nuisance. Not at all. Uh, Gives me something else to do besides get drunk. Uh, I'm Paul Kovalik. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Kovalik. I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, has anyone told my husband? Yes, the doctor went for him. Did, did you know that you were speaking Latin? Oh, that's impossible. I, I've never studied Latin. Attention. I've never fainted, period. Sir, if I were you, I should not leave her alone tonight. I don't intend to, not that it's any of your concern. Alan, please. Excuse me. I presumed. Plane elevator accident. Blow out in the cargo hold. Blow out? It's freezing and there's a wind. Hold it. Negative on that. What? Negative. I tell you, there's ice down there. I saw it. There's a wind howling. No way, baby. We did have a blowout. You'd know it in zero flat. Then where did the ice come from? The wind. Are you saying it came from inside the plane? <laughs> Take a look. I'll be right there. Honey, you pull yourself together. I'm going to need you. Sheila. My turn to say sorry. Come on, honey. What is it? What's the matter? I don't know. I'm frightened. I think I may be. I, I keep hearing strange things. Is it some kind of chanting I can't understand and then they call to me sometimes over and over you've been under a lot of stress it's my fault I guess you do believe me don't you I mean you you don't think I'm ill I don't know what to think Howdy, 
Captain, what's up? Not leaving us, are you? Yeah, we're going to take a bus and leave the driving to you. <laughs> Yes. You don't have any in that shipment of yours we don't know about, do you? What do you mean? No, I don't know yet. You don't have anything uh, live. Well, of course not. Why? Just curious about a little problem we have down there. Sorry. Captain, um, is there anything wrong? No, miss. Nothing serious. If you're going below, would you be kind enough to speak to my dog? His name is Damon. You know, to reassure him. Of course. Well, Jim? All right, I've got it open. on the bulkhead.
The flight engineer has been killed. Jim's dead. What? Something in the cargo hold killed him. We don't know what. Oh, God. Is the captain going to be okay? As far as his physical wound is concerned, yes. As for the rest, I'm not sure. There's something going on. I want to know what. That elevator still stuck? It's the flight engineer. He's dead. What? Something awful's happened back there. Oh, uh, here, try this. with me, honey. Regulations don't count now. Your flight engineer is dead, your captain's hurt, and there's something happening to this airplane. I want to know what you're doing about it. What's the matter with you? Some kind of a blowout in the hole? You're doing nothing about it. There's no blowout. It would show on my instrument. I don't give a damn about your instrument. Do something. You're the one who's going to do something, Farley. Get out of here. Now. Sometimes known as shock. You call it shock. That is somewhat more difficult. Your arm has been frozen to the point of being burned. Can you understand that? I mean, wait. Suppose the instruments were wrong. If there was a blowout, the loss of oxygen, it could have caused hallucinations. Oh, respectfully, Captain, your arm is not a generalized condition. It could not relate simply to the absence of oxygen. It's more specific. As though something incredibly cold had touched you there. I'll get my bag. Thank you. Right, Cornwall. I'll use the radios out. What about the backups? They're out too. Uh, Excuse me, what's happening back here? He ain't heard. This is a little trouble with the plane. You do know, Mr. O'Neill. You know very well. Those things which this man has taken. Removed from the soil where they have rested for thousands of years. Oh, lady, whatever are you talking about? They are sacred things. They have their own powers. That is what is happening to us. Oh, come on. I'm not going to listen to this. Paul, do you know what she's talking about? The Droata, Mrs. Pinder. Of course. The Druids. Believe it or not, here we are in the last half of the 20th century under these circumstances. And what are we worrying about? The grotesque practices of a primitive cult that was stamped out before the coming of Christ. Not, not entirely, Mr. Kovalik. There are still druids. Oh, yes, of course there are. And there are still witches and Satanists. And those who believe that Jimson Weed can make them immortal. There's never been any shortage of idiot things to believe in, nor idiots to take them up. Stop it! What have druids got to do with what's going on here? Everyone on that heath knows the legend. They've faded for hundreds of years. Inside the altar at Grove Abbey was a druid sacrificial stone. That stone is on this plane. Hey, lady, are you trying to tell me that a, 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 a piece of rock's got something to do with killing the flight engineer? The abbey was built on the sacred grove of the druids, a place where they committed human sacrifices to the ancient gods of darkness, cold wind, the old ones, they call them. And every hundred years, at the summer solstice, they still... It's summer's eve. Paul... You said that was tonight. For all I know, it's Halloween. How do you know all this stuff, anyway? Well, if it's any of your business, I'd like to look at ruins. Preferably religious ruins. Why don't you just knock it off? Confession is supposed to be good for the soul, isn't it? Paul is a priest! 
was. Very definitely was. They have enough trouble without sticking them with me. Okay. Okay, so he, he struck out as a priest. So what? What's that got to do with us? With all this crazy business. This lady's talking about demons and spirits and stuff on this airplane. Well, I'd sure like to get some answers and right quick. Perhaps you are too eager for answers. Sometimes there are none. The only magic I know is that man can resist gravity and fly at 37,000 feet. I hope that makes you happy. It hasn't me. What would? I'm going to open a bottle of it right now. <laughs> it might not make me happy, but it will amuse me to think of all of you back here worrying about your lives as though they were of some importance. He doesn't matter. We have to find out what it wants. It's inside the plane. I understand we're stuck up here. You ought to demand your money back. Wish I could find something funny in all this. Stick around. Maybe you will. Well, are you beyond fear, or are you just drunk? <laughs> Both. But if I were you, I'd worry more about your fellow passengers than whatever it is you brought on board. Come on. Oh. oh. Sheila? Oh. No! Sheila, what is it? You're hearing something, aren't you? Uh -huh. My wife has been hearing voices, but she was treated for nervous exhaustion a few weeks ago. What do you hear? I don't know voices. They keep calling my name. It stopped. Do you remember what you said when... when you fainted? Ore igne sancti spiritus. Yes, I heard that. One of the voices. What does it mean? Well, do you know her, don't you? It's from a black mass. A prayer to the devil? What to that oh. thing back there? My wife is imagining things, that's all. She's hearing voices. Uh, yeah. Paul says she was reciting a black mass. Well, sounded like it. 
I was probably wrong. I was a worse scholar than I was a priest. It was a man's voice, wasn't it? Yes. Do you know who that was, my dear? In 1407, Lord Compton, the owner of the land on which the Abbey stood, your ancestor, was burnt at the stake for heresy and murder. He had worshipped the Druid gods, offered human sacrifices, members of your own family. And now, the old ones, What's you are the they want. You're the sacrifice they demand. <laughs> Maybe she's right. What else can it be? Everything's gone crazy. You know all about these things. You were a priest, weren't you? What can we do? <laughs> you don't want a priest, Mr. Friley. You want a parachute. Don't you laugh at me. You lousy drunk. What good are you, anyway? The sacrifice. The child. Where's the child? You going crazy? No! No! Please! Perhaps we could offer it this. You mean like voodoo? You want to offer the doll instead of... My God, that's hideous. We need to dress it. We we'll need something of Mrs. O'Neill's. You can't do this. You stay out of it. But I understand what's happening here. I'm the only one that does. I'm warning you. It won't work. You'll only make things worse. It will work. It's worth trying. Anything is. Is this yours? Wait a minute. You leave my wife's thing. No, Alan, don't. You got us into this. You brought that thing aboard. Now stay out of it or you'll get hurt. I got one and follow you on that. This will do. We need something more. You know. Tell us! Are you too good, too holy for this? Too holy? My dear Manya, you of all people should know better than that. We need some of her hair. No, mister. No, Alan, let them. It doesn't matter. And some of your fingernails. Annalie, hold these.
I know what you're thinking, but what could I do? She wouldn't let me help. Mr. O'Neill, I would never dream of sitting in judgment on another. thing only wants me. They'll believe anything now that offers them the barest hope of survival. And they'll do anything, no matter how stupid or bestial. Homo sapiens in all his glory. Do you really hate yourself that much? <laughs> I always wait for that. The defrocked priest, delightedly armchair analyst. Where did you lose your faith? I didn't. It lost me. <laughs> I'm frightened. Can you help me? I'm sorry. I'm fresh out. Aren't you afraid? Of dying. I gave that up along with the rest of my illusions. I don't understand you. Those are only words. Words, yes. We talk a lot in the church. It keeps us from asking why we can't have one sign, one tiny infinitesimal sign to sustain us in the darkness. To touch to see. Father. Don't look to me. I have nothing. I have no help. You have no choice. Why? Why? Because it's you that they want. You're afraid of them, the old ones, because you think of them as evil. But you're wrong. They're spirits of nature. The force that holds this plane is as old as the world itself. And aren't you a part of nature? You are as much from the earth as the sacred stones below. 
above anything. You who betrayed your own pitiful faith. Pitiful, Mrs. Pender, and what are you selling? Powers that are old when this universe was young. Powers that you no more can withstand than an ignorant savage. A fire? Mrs. Pender, is that it? No. <laughs> the way the ancients held off the demons on Midsummer's Eve? They built a bonfire on the highest hill. We're at 20 or 30,000, that ought to be high enough. And then those poor, ignorant savages would huddle around the light and smoke, pray for the dawn. At the first shaft of sunlight, demons go back to hell, or wherever it is they come from. Yes, a fire. A fire for the burning of witches. A fire. Will fire work? When is the sunrise? 3.42 out here. I wouldn't count on seeing it. Well, maybe we could climb to meet it. Catch it early as it comes over the rim of the world. Now, oh, what is this rim of the world jazz? We climb, we burn more fuel. Bernie, if there's any chance at all, we ought to try it.
out of this. One life against how many? All of us. The doll worked. The fire worked, it just wasn't enough.
altitude where it's safe to breathe. You can take your masks off now. Please give us priority clearance for emergency landing with full standby. Roger, AOA 19er X ray. Do you want clearance for instrument landing? Negative, Cornwall. Negative. No instruments. Thank you. 